Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Somebody recently in my channel comments uh, requested that could I make a video about cool things in modern Java. This is 2022 and a lot, lot of things have happened. We are more firmly on Java version 17 right now and a lot of things have happened since Java 8. So I thought uh, let's do that video, let's revisit in a kind of short video uh, what are my personal favorites that have happened since Java 8 that you can do with the modern Java. So let's do that right now, let's dive in. I have a list of notes here and I will not be showing so many uh, demos today because I try to keep this short, so just a few a kind of minimal demos, but I, I, I'm also going to include links to some awesome deep dive videos and many, many things I mentioned here. My first one doesn't actually need a demo, so my first uh, kind of like is until Java version 8, um, they just kept on adding more and more stuff to Java. So with each release, Java just got more and more bloated. It got more and more features. But starting from, uh, from uh, modern Java, starting from Java 9, they started deprecating and removing things quite a lot. So there is actually a few links. I'm li including the links also in the uh, video description section. So um, here is like deprecated API list. I'm not going to go into details because there's so much, but just mentioning how many things have been deprecated. And many of these deprecated things have ever since been completely removed as well. So uh, that's my favorite feature because when they are removing stuff from the core, for example, uh, first version of Java, well, well, up until version eight, we had Java FX, we had always Nashhorn, whether you like it or not. Uh, that's the JavaScript engine inside Java. Uh, we had Corba, uh, a lot of Corba. Oh, I remember the days. Uh, we had applets. Uh, applets were where it all began, but now applets have been deprecated and even will be removed. Uh, we used to have MIDI instruments. There was one megabyte of MIDI instruments included always. So there was just so much stuff. And then we con married all that crap. And nowadays uh, it's more lean and mean, uh, little compact Java. And I love it because the Java core is much more lean. If you want to make it even more lean, you can go and watch my video on JLink and JPackage and see how you can uh, custom customize your own virtual machine, picking just the modules you actually need. So you can make it even tighter. But nowadays even the core Java is much smaller and faster than it used to be. And one big thing, uh, speed might be overrated sometimes, although the kind of cold start speed is quite a nice thing to in increase. But one more thing is security. So every time they cut off a library from the core, it means that uh, they cut off potential security vulnerabilities in that area as well. So I'm pretty happy in that sense to see Applets go and Corba go, even though uh, I, I have nostalgia for those parts, but that's all. Favorite thing number two would be automated uh, improvements like module system, uh, uh, more better garbage collection options, improved null pointer exception even. So these things you get uh, like for free without doing any code changes or any, any new insights. So just by updating your Java to 17, uh, you will be getting a lot of things that just happen and make your experience better. So leaner, tighter, modular, uh, better garbage collection options, uh, algorithms, improved null pointer exceptions. I'm not going into details, but there's been a lot of changes to the garbage collection along the way, for example. For the better null pointer exceptions, you do need to jump to Java 17, so you don't get that in Java 11. Now after that, I think it makes sense to bundle by the long-term support version. So what's my favorite uh, on Java 11 level, where many of you are right now? My personal uh, favorites would be JShell, that you get awesome REPL. So uh, you get awesome feedback loop. You can play along with your Java features and you get immediate feedback. And this allows me to demonstrate my second favorite new thing, which is var keyword. Um, don't listen to me. It seems like a small thing, but small things add up quite rapidly, so you get a lot more. So uh, we used to do this, something like this one. Yeah, or this one. Valid as well. And I get rapid feedback loop. I can play with this. This is like Java 1.0 stuff. 
and, and unfortunately also Java 8 stuff. But uh, starting from Java 11, by the way, I'm not counting now the intermediate releases. So I'm, I'm saying that in Java 11, although I think this came along in Java 10, but to keep this simple, I'm saying Java 11 level and Java 17 level, right? So now we can do this one. Sure. And it seems like a minor thing. So I'm, I'm saving a few characters. My fingertips are not getting so achy, right? But it's actually a big thing because there is those horrible uh, combinations. Ever seen a map of uh, map of list of strings, uh, sort of map of string and list of strings or something like that? I've seen so much nested generic types, and it, it it's very horrible. So the thing here is that we have type inference. So in er earlier version of Java you needed to kind of be type uh, very strict about type on both sides of the expression. So um, you define the type for the item or, or the reference, and then you define the type on the right side, and they need to match. And compiler is checking that, and everything is good and very strict. In the new, new way, uh, we are inferring the type based on the information on the right side. And the type can be really horrible, but you don't need to repeat it on the left side. Uh, there is some pitfalls such as you need to know the type if I say var hello equals null. What's the type here? So cannot infer type for the variable. And there can be cases where you are actually um, hiding too much good information. So if you uh, combine this with a function call, and uh, it might not be obvious what type your function is getting, but remember that this is optional. So use it when it makes sense and makes your code more readable and avoid it when it doesn't. So it's an optional thing for you. Uh, I typically, when I learn something new, I first go crazy with it and try to overuse it. And then I roll back a little bit and find what's the sane way to do it. I did this with var keyword and with optionals. And it means I don't var everywhere, but it's an option I have. And in many, in more places, it does good than bad. So, so uh, in some places you shouldn't use it. In most places, it's awesome. It's just making the code so much more readable because you don't need to repeat things that are clumsy or complicated. And uh, there was some minor changes to this one as well. So nowadays you can use this in Lambda in uh, incoming variables or lamb Lambda parameters in general and uh, so forth. So it's improved slightly, but main thing, it's awesome. So JShell var keyword, awesome stuff. We have some minor stuff like you can run the Java code uh, just by saying Java my file Java, treat it like a scripting language. My, myself in uh, early days of Java, this would have been awesome, but nowadays I'm not. It's not a, a big feature for me, but small thing you can do now. Collections have got a whole lot of better. I've done some deep dives in these. I, I will include the links in the video but I'm not doing today because that would eat all the time for my video. But uh, we got awesome collections and streams already at Java 8 level. And Java 11 is building on top of that. So we get a lot of improvements that make your life even more functional. So just revise your API understanding of collection streams and strings and files. You will find a lot of small things that combine and add up quite fast. I was originally underestimating those small things, but when you put all the all of these together, you get something awesome pretty much always. So I think that summarizes what I'm thinking about Java 11 level. And this is obviously not everything we got there, but this video is about my favorites, kind of big things that I'm using that have changed the way I code Java. And this is it. So these have been relevant for me. Do you have some favorites to add here on Java 11 level that have changed uh, your coding life to more positive direction? Let me know in the comment section. That would be awesome. Meanwhile, if we move on to Java 17 uh, level, what we got here? Well, this is a little bit interesting and different story. Well, let's start with text blocks because that's fast. So we can now do this. And again, the guy who I used to be when Java 1.0 was released would have been screaming of joy with this because we can do multi-line text and we can even include uh, HTML or XML or JSON. 
So you know the drill if you have been programming with any other language, they typically allow you to do this. And uh, text blocks can be awesome. Now, uh, today's me might be more tempted to use some templates and load them from a disk if I need to do a huge block. But there might be some cases where this is a joy for me to write uh, multi-line blocks like this. As with everything, there is some pitfalls to be cautious. So one might be that it's automatically putting these line feed characters and you, they might be good for you or not good for you. Second uh, thing to consider is indentation. So it tries to figure out what's indentation and what's valid white space to include. So to summarize, if you want exact, you still would like to probably rather use uh, string append uh, or string buffer append. But uh, if you just want a wall of text uh, formatted and uh, you, you want to include it in the code, then this is nice to have, perhaps. Uh, it's, a, it's a feature, but it's not something I use daily or need, need very often. Um, my favorite feature under Java 17 is, of course, records. You can probably guess this because I've made multiple videos. So I have basic getting started records. I have deep dives in records, how to modify why, why and where, where to use them. So that's a big thing. I'm not going to do a demo today. Just believe they are awesome. Go look my other videos if you like. But that's the major thing you get on Java 17 level immediately. They will change your, your coding style. And it supports awesomely functional style and minimizing your code, making the code more readable. We also got something called sealed classes pattern matching for instance of, and some people might be wondering that, oh, what I'm supposed to do with this? Uh, you can do something. So sealed classes is a sealed hierarchy where you define already base classes and uh, uh, extension classes and it's sealed, so it cannot be extended further. And there are some benefits to that one, especially when you combine that with pattern matching, especially when you combine that with switch expressions uh, that would be handling pattern matching. But here is the trick. They are not yet out of the preview. So what's in the Java 17 officially? Well, that would be switch expressions, yield and arrow syntax. So that is pretty cool. But uh, I, I think I'll skip the demo for that one. It seems like a little bit syntactic sugar, a little bit syntactic sugar. But uh, if we take a look in the future, what's going on? Well, uh, there will be more bits and pieces that are not in Java 17 level even. So what we are going to be getting is pattern matchings for, for switch. And at that point, you are able to combine a lot of these things. And then it starts making sense. However, we are now in Java 17 long-term long support edition. We have early access of Java 18 and 19, but note these are intermediate Java versions. So to be able to get possibly all these things so that they are not preview anymore, we need to zoom all the way to Java 21. It's not so far away, but it will be definitely another video in another year. It's not going to happen this year. So it's 2023 stuff. We'll get back to that when it happens. But just saying that, no, do note that some of the things have now started and you can taste them a little bit, but they don't necessarily change your life. So they are not big things yet. They will be in the next one. So for the deep dives, uh, go and see my old videos. I'm dropping plenty of links in the description and including in the video. Uh, there is plenty of good stuff that I released last year, and it's still quite valid. Uh, a lot of stuff, especially if you like Java 17 level. I have also a little bit of stuff on that modularity and diet thing that I just mentioned as a big feature. So you can definitely do that one. And I do have something uh, for the upcoming features. So Java pattern matching, including sealed classes, deconstruction pattern, and what's coming up after Java 17. So if you're like me, uh, interested in where Java is heading uh, might be worth your time. And it's not outdated yet. <laughs> it will be at some day. Okay, I try to keep this video short. So I hope this was good for you. Um, see you in the next one. Bye bye.